This is Wealth Builders, presented by State & Walsh, a show designed to pull back the curtain of the financial industry and bring true transparency to the forefront of conversation. On the show, we cover topics like financial education, current events, and interview business leaders and industry experts with the ultimate goal of helping listeners discover their own path to financial independence. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Wealth Builders. I am joined this week by my partner, Ryan Staten, and a great, great friend, uh, Ryan Levy. Ryan, we have known each other from, gosh, the little days and like the baby pool till now, man. It's been, it's been a, it's been a pretty cool journey. Our mom and uh, our mom has been great friends since high school. It's uh, and just seeing you evolve over these years in this awesome business that you started. Um, super pumped today to kind of have you on the show and like kind of talk about your journey with Specular and all you're doing. Well, I, I appreciate you having me on, man. I'm really excited and honored to be here, really. Awesome. Appreciate it. Well, I'm, I know I'm we always like to be the, here too with to <laughs> participate in your in your on screen bromance. I'm just <laughs> yeah. here. Just here to take <laughs> <Yeah>. notes. <laughs> Ryan's just taking notes today, I'm but here. um I'm actually gonna turn it over to Ryan because Ryan always likes to start these episodes with uh one of his favorite questions. So Ryan, I'll kind of turn it over to you and uh you can do the brain buster. Yeah, so I obviously thank you for for being on with us and and we've learned a lot about your business and kind of how you got started and we're we're excited to share that today. Obviously, we're we're we talked a little bit in our last episode about an entrepreneurial series, and one thing that a lot of people are curious about is when they're working in a job. And I know we're going to share your personal story today about this, but when you're working in a job and you feel like you're really good at what you do and you have a vision for the future, and maybe you want to take it a step further and kind of branch out and start something for yourself. You know, talk a little bit about the process and we'll get into more of your professional bio as as the show goes on. But like Devin mentioned, one of my favorite questions to ask guests is tell us one thing, something interesting about yourself that wouldn't show up in your professional bio. Uh, this is a really good question and it's not easy to answer <laughs> because it's like, do I want to put something on my resume that they're going to be like, wow, we want to hire this guy you know, or something to that nature. I'm thinking like, you know, and, you know, getting a job in that sense. But I think, um, you know, there's a few things that that I do really well, I believe, um, that kind of keep me going. Um, you know, I, I run into creative blocks here and there. I think any, anybody in my field does. Um, and I'm able to um, step away from what I'm doing to kind of refuel that um, rather than just getting frustrated in that moment. So, um, and I've learned to really, you know, do that over time. It's not something I, you know, just started. So I think that's something <clears throat> I would, uh, you know, let people know that's not on my resume. Um, so it's really just- Another thing too, I think is that you're, you're a pretty darn good guitar player. I'm okay. I'm not that good. Like that. You can you can shred it a little bit. <laughs> well, we're supposed to jam soon. So hopefully, whenever I make it, whenever, whenever you leave that sunny California, come back to Baltimore. Yeah, you know it's coming up. I'll be back, and we'll have to jam. Definitely. But, um, yeah, uh, you know that's another thing. Yeah, I like to snowboard. Oh, that's good. Play that's guitar. Snowboard. Anything creative, you know, keep the juices flowing. Pretty there much. Yeah. Well, no, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. So yeah. that. We'll segue that into, uh, I guess, the the meat of the show, which is really just getting familiar with letting everyone out there know who you are. Um, so I guess kicking it off, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, the career that you're in, kind of the industry, what you do and, and some of the work that you've been doing um, over the past few years. Sure. Well, it's definitely been an evolution. Like I started <clears throat> my career, you know, after college um, in graphic design, um, jumped around quite a bit, learned a lot of skills and in, in, you know, video production. I've worked for studios and I was at Stanley Black & Decker for, 
you know, around 10 years total, um, just learning all of these different aspects of, you know, um, creative fields um, from like design <clears throat> basics, also up to like motion graphics. And like I said before, video production, editing. So it's a encompassing a lot of, you know, different skills and trying to enhance all of that. I mean, it's I'm definitely not a master um, of everything, you know, so um, I've kind of taken that and, and focused on a few aspects here. So and now I'm, you know, more in the 3D world. So um, but also motion graphics and kind of bring that in as well. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's what's kind of evolved is speculars, you know, 3D rendering, animations, motion graphics. Um, we also do some uh, 3D modeling. So we're really sticking, you know, focusing on that world. So when you're talking about like like these 3D motions and everything you just kind of told us, so explain to us what exactly is that? Why why would a business use some of these these things that you do at the service that you provide? Because um, mm -hmm. I mean, you just did just briefly just you just animated our logo, and Ryan mm -hmm. and I looked at it. And we're like, how the heck do people do this? This is My this is so you. this is so freaking cool, <laughs> and I'm like. I, it's awesome. I think it's, it just brings a brand to life almost. So tell us a little more about what these things mean and like why a business would like, you know, do something like this and why the customers you have now, why they decided to do it. Great. Well, that's a great question. Um, and, you know, to kind of bring in current events, I mean, with the pandemic, this is a huge, I know, you know, we might get into this later, but this is a huge reason why I started the business. But, you know, 3D, like specifically product, rendering and animation has become a lot more popular within this time because you know for a while people couldn't go on sets and shoot product photography so a lot of these businesses are looking at this as an opportunity to get into this world um, 3d rendering specifically um, like product rendering there's so many benefits to it i mean it's once you have that cad data that 3d data of your product it's easy to kind of take that, visualize it before it's manufactured. Um, and you can use those images and animations as, you know, commercial for like commercial use. So, um, I mean, there's just so many benefits to it. Um, I hope that answered that. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, one of the things that I thought was cool about what you do and, you know, we see, I guess for everyone out there that's listening, you see stuff on TV and you're like, man, that's cool. It, like the lawnmower on the TV all of a sudden takes itself apart and puts itself back together. And the person right. in the background talks about the features like that's what you do, really. Right. And you, you're yeah. kind of taking a static object and you're breaking it down and moving it around in ways that, you know, traditionally you wouldn't be able to do, obviously, if you're face to face with a product. So that's exactly I think, right. I think it's really it's, it's a really cool concept. That like we see and it's part of our everyday life, but people just like don't know what it is. So, um, yeah. yeah, that's kind of what you do, which is which is fascinating for guys like us that we're Thank more. You. you know, obviously we're financial guys. I'm not. I'm not it, the artist. It's kind of like we, we're know, clueless about that. Possible, possible <laughs> is a good way to yeah. look at. It, you know, no, that's that's awesome. So, you know, you've been in that that field. You said you work for Stanley Black and Decker. Um, you know, for those that don't know, it's obviously a large. Well, most people have probably heard of it if you, you know, own any tools, but that's a big company here in Baltimore. So, um, you know, how did you end up in, in California and ultimately how did you kind of evolve in your career to get to the point where you decided to start Specular? That's a good question too. Um, I think, well, I went out, I mean, Baltimore is my hometown. I always love it, but I left Baltimore to, to, for a job, um, out here and, um, you know, it was really good experience, but, you know, it, it kind of pushed me even more into, you know, a dream of mine, which is starting my own thing. Like, I've always wanted to do that. I've had that, like, spirit to start something on my own for as long as I can remember. But it really <clears throat> took all of those years in, you know, working for businesses and, and other, you know, companies in general to kind of push me to this point because number one, I learned so much in that point in time in my life where I felt confident enough 
to go off and start this. So that was really just a timing thing. I didn't think about that when I came out here. Just opportunities came up and new relationships and working with you guys, you know. And I'm not trying to plug your company right now, but I'm going to. It's like it's the relationships, the people that kind of help, you know, make you feel comfortable and like confident, you know, into doing it. So no, we appreciate that. And so I know when we first started talking, it was one of the first conversations we had when um, we kind of came together and we started working together, um, we kind of brought it to our attention. Like, you know, I had this dream, not sure when the right time was and it kind of came a little probably quicker than you expected. Like, you know, I think I'm, I think I'm ready. So what, when did you really know, that, you know, what, now's the time to start speculating. You know, you had a great job, you're, you're doing well. Um, and, you, and what made you, you know, it, it's risky. It was the pandemic was already started. I think it's, yeah. last, I think you started last May or June. You started speculating on your own. And so you have a salary, you have, you have comfort, you have guarantees. We're in a pandemic. People were out of work. What made you say, you know what? Now's the time. Now's the time I want to start specular and, and kind of go on my own. And I know it's a risk, but I have this vision. So what, what was that like to you? What, what was your thought process? Yeah. Um, like going back to the pandemic, I mean, that, provided a lot of new opportunities. And um, I think it was just, I got to a good point of, of growth and uh, with my freelance clients, you know, people that I've known, companies that I've been working with through the years, um, they've kind of opened up more into this work. And um, that time couldn't have been more perfect um, for me. Um, so it was really just a, a growth in in clients, you know, and it wasn't easy, you know, even making that decision because it's, yeah, like I was comfortable. I had paychecks coming in every two weeks. I was like, oh man, you know, how could I risk all that? You know, what am I going to do if I can't pay rent or, you know, a mortgage, whatever. Um, but yeah, it was just literally, I have to do it. You know, I'm young. If I'm going to do it, it's now. And if I fail now, fine, I'll get back on my feet. But if I do it later in life, you know, there's even more of a risk at that point. So, so for people out there that are wondering, like, you know, someone else is in their shoes and they're listening to this and saying, now I have a good job and working at a big company, but I really want to start my own thing. So how is that differed, you know, working for, because obviously the work that you do is very similar, right? The end, the end result or the end product for the clients that you work with, but how has it been different working at a larger firm or with a larger company to now, you know, it's yours, it's specular, you know, you're kind of the key decision maker and the owner. Um, mm -hmm. So what's that like? Uh, liberating. I mean, to be honest, it was like, you know, I, I had a lot of good bosses and, and leaders and I had a few that weren't, you know, um, but that's okay because you learn from that. But over time, it's like you're you're kind of held back creatively, in it, to a sense, but also given a lot more opportunity because these big companies, you know, they have a lot of resources to help you get there. Um, and uh, you know, I think a, a main component of this is like I was able to make yeah my own creative decisions, and that that's a risk in itself too. And, um, you know, it's not just me. Like I, I like to work with other creatives and bring them onto jobs if needed. And I learn a lot in that sense too. So I'm, you know, I'm not finished learning, you know, it just, um, it's important to stick with, you know, bringing other people around too and other minds. Um, but it's been different, you know, it's been, uh, I'm still, you know, learning, you know, learning how to, do that uh, efficiently so hope that answered that question yeah sure. so no, you, it's awesome. you're almost you're almost a year in as a business owner you know it's uh during this pandemic so what, what are some of the things that you've learned over the last year that you could possibly tell other people that are looking to you know start their own business or early on in their in their entrepreneurial efforts you know what are some like the key lessons that you learned as a business owner being off on your own like you're in your first year Get a bookkeeper. <laughs> um, Good answer. Hire some guys like you to help 
guide the future a little bit because, you know, if you're running a business, you don't have time really to do all of that. I mean, I don't, you know, I like to focus on what I do, you know, so it's important to have other minds and other people helping out there um, because it all goes by really fast and, you know, I'm going to forget to do things that, you know, it, it's good to have that help. Um, so I'd recommend that for sure. Oh, that's awesome. That, that actually is a, that's a concept that we, I know we've talked about it. We talk about with a lot of our, um, you know, friends, clients, and other people that are businesses and being a solo business owner doesn't mean you have to really truly be out there on your own. Right. There are people out there that can help you. You can effectively create your own board of directors, your own group of consultants around you using some of the things that most businesses kind of need anyway. Like you know, mm -hmm. everybody pays, well, most people pay taxes, obviously. <laughs> so like, you need it. You need, you need an accountant for that. And CPAs can be really good consultants in that space. You mentioned bookkeeping, you know, people like us where we get into a broader uh, scope of planning and financial planning, planning for the future, planning around growing your business and then ultimately, you know, uh, transitioning that at some to some other phase of life later. And, you know, there's attorneys that can help with with legal situations and there's all kinds of people, operational consultants out there that can help you, you know, first for, you know, businesses like yours where you know, you're, you're the creative mind, you're really good at what you do. But, you know, as you grow as an enterprise, figuring out, you know, how you know, we're going to manage people, how we're going to grow, are we going to bring on a bunch of employees, are you going to continue to contract things out? So those are all considerations I know that we've talked about, but for everyone else out there, I mean, if you're going to be a solo business practitioner, that doesn't mean that, you know, you have to be by yourself. So I yeah. think that's a, that's a common misconception. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, you very, you covered it very well there. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a, those are good points, Ryan, because it, it can get lonely, you know? It can be a very lonely feeling because a lot of people don't understand what you're going through and having, you know, people around you that you can bounce off ideas, I think, is, is so important in the early stages of a business. Almost creating like a board of directors is something that we're very passionate about is creating a successful board of directors around businesses so they have – it's a one-stop shop where they can go ask whether it's their CPA, their advisor, their benefits person, their attorney – um, not being afraid to go out there and ask questions and try to um, make their business bet better. Mm -hmm. So one last kind of question for you today, Ryan, is what, what's the vision of Specular? What do you see? What's that? What's the, you know, you're looking for, you've been a year in now. What, what's like the, the grand vision of this? Is it something that you want to try to make into a, a, a big, massive company? Is it something you want to kind of, you know, you want to keep small stuff? You only want to bring on stuff you're really passionate about. Like what's your future? What, what how do you see specular growing over the next you know 10 15 20 years that's a good question um right now to be completely honest i'm just laser focused on paying my bills no <laughs> i mean I'm, there's no lie in that but like it's like um i do want to grow i want to like eventually you know grow the team like put together some more minds and then just go after it you know and have people focus on certain things um, I don't, <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of overhead. <laughs> so like, you know, getting a studio space is a possibility, but you know, not something that I'm focused on really right now. Um, I just, the main thing is like taking on new clients that have, um, you know, an idea of what they're looking for, but it's, it's like something different from the typical project, you know, or it's something I've been doing. So it's like evolving projects, complexities, and like understanding that, and also, you know, sticking with the trends um, is important, and then kind of pushing it further. But um, it's like developing, um, you know, a look. I think that that's my, my ultimate goal is like to not fall into line with every other you know studio so it's like you have to stand out in some way and it might not fit mm -hmm. certain clients um vision um but it will with other clients you know and those are the clients i want to work with um 
that are a little bit more open, um, if that makes sense. But yeah, yeah, I, don't, I hope that covered enough. No, that's, uh, a, yeah, that's, that's a hard I, question. That's I, lo I, lo I love that. Uh, that's kind of the artistic side of business too, right? I mean, it's the branding within, I mean, you do branding work, obviously, but it's kind of like the brand within the brand of you want people, what I'm taking away from this is you want people to see your work and say like, you know, that that's specular. You know, like yeah. they can see it, they recognize it, and yeah, that's different. Those are things I think every business owner kind of strives for that. That's your, it's like a whole nother type of competitive advantage in the market when people can see and recognize, you know, who you are and what you do. Um, that has kind of a, a that has a lot of value in it. So I love that. I think that too, it really speaks to, um, you know, the not just the, the, the business sense that people need to have to be successful, but also the artistic sense of understanding the the art of business, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So I, I love that. And it plays really well into kind of what you do too. So, oh, thank you. Thanks. 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 so last question. I know I told you that last one was the last question, but here's my final question for you. Okay. You are in your first day of retirement. If you decide to ever retire, you're on a sunny beach somewhere and you're looking back on your career. Specular turn into your dream, whatever it may be, what it turned into. What is the legacy? You look back at that time and what's that legacy? What what have you accomplished? What's like you look back and what are some of the things that you really want to leave behind and then your goals there when you look back on your career? Um, whether as a person or as a business owner, what does that look like for you? Mm -hmm. I think um well, number one, I, I've thought about this retirement thing. It's like <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that in the traditional sense like i still want to like yeah sit on a beach and like well you can do that now yeah and you can do that now it sounds like a weekend then, like like just hanging out whenever i want on a beach but you know i i'm always going to want to walk in and check things out and help direct somehow creatively but um you know what would i look back on um as a legacy type thing i think um I think bringing on honestly like young talent and like taking it easy you know for them like so they're not stressed but they're learning and mm -hmm. being happy and I'd love to do that like hire new talent um, and uh, kind of guide them through maybe starting their own thing something like that um, that's a really hard question. And I know I'll think of something more that's, that's a great. That's after. a great answer, though. <laughs> no, that's, that's a great answer because that's one of our things we want to look back on, too. We want to bring new advisors in this business and help them be successful and help them help more people in, in the way we think they should be helped. You know, so I think I think that's a great answer. So finishing up, Ryan, tell us real quick, where do people find you? What's some of your social media? Where they can they go check out some of your work? Uh, go to speculardigital.com. Um, you'll see some work on there. I haven't really updated it with a lot of the new work we've been doing, but, um, there's some really cool stuff on there. Uh, talks a little bit about what we do. Um, you know, there's contact form on there. You can reach out through that or Ryan at speculardigital.com. Um, yeah. And you know, it's, everything's changing. We're trying to get more work up there. Obviously there's NDA stuff, you know, in the way there. Because all those projects are the really cool ones. No, um, but uh, yeah, just reach out if you have questions about, you know, starting a business. I can help there too. And then, you know, if you want to work together, I'm here. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, we can't thank you enough. For I know how busy you are and taking the time to be with us today, chat with us. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in this week for another episode of Wealth Builders. Make sure you subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, and any other podcast, and also take a look at us on YouTube. We have a lot of very cool interviews coming up shortly on the next few weeks, so have a great week. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you, guys.